What happened, Kitty? Godzilla! Scary! I know, but only in the movies. What if it comes out? Well, to find that out, let's answer a monstrous question. What if Godzilla was real? Zoom in! Ever since Godzilla first appeared in 1954, he's been getting bigger and bigger. In one of the latest movies, this beast stands a whopping 119 meters tall. That's like six times taller than the tallest animal known to have existed, the Sauro Poseidon, which reached about 18 meters in height. So, this makes us wonder, what if Godzilla suddenly appeared out of the ocean for real and shook our cities with his monstrous roar? Would we stand any chance of taming this wild beast? Or would we surrender to our unfortunate fate and face the consequences? Well, according to paleontologist Mike Habib, who also helps design fictitious creatures for films, there is no need to worry. Yes, that's because a creature like Godzilla could never exist in real life for multiple reasons. Let us see why. Firstly, because of his immense size, his heart would need to be extremely huge, thousands of tons, filling most of his chest to pump blood up to his head. His blood vessels would have to be so large that you could drive a car through them. Additionally, for that giant heart to function, Godzilla would require insane amounts of energy comparable to what a small power plant consumes in just one minute. So even before approaching a city, he'd essentially be brain dead. But let's assume he did use his nuclear power to adapt and survive by walking on all fours like Titanosaurus, keeping his head out in front to reduce the effort of pumping blood against gravity. Well, in this scenario, the giant lizard would face movement issues. You see, whenever you move, it's because your brain sends signals to the nerves in your muscles. The fastest of these signals travels at around 100 meters per second, making the message from the brain to the leg virtually instantaneous. But for poor Godzilla, it would take more than a full second for nerve signals to travel the length of his body. While that might sound quite fast, in reality, his nerve conduction speed would be so slow that he couldn't move, taking forever to do anything. Even if Godzilla could move swiftly, he wouldn't have time to destroy buildings since he'd be busy sunbathing. Yes, that's because reptiles regulate body temperature by basking in the sun. But for Godzilla, heat would struggle to reach his internal organs through thick layers of tissue. So to stay warm, he'd need to spend hundreds of hours continuously sunbathing. But what if Godzilla were more like a mammal like us? He wouldn't need to depend on the sun because warm-blooded creatures produce their own body heat. Unfortunately, this would cause another problem. He'd likely overheat and cook himself as his core temperature could reach 300 degrees. Even if he managed to overcome these challenges, his skeleton would crumble under the immense weight of 90,000 metric tons. The skeletal structure simply isn't strong enough to bear such a colossal load. In the end, he would just collapse into a massive heap of meat. So the only way for Godzilla to survive is by remaining in the fictional movies. Trivia time! Did you know 
Godzilla first appeared in a Japanese movie in 1954. Yes, in its original form, the movie was titled Gojira. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. <laughs> Little Godzilla. <laughs> Never mind. Well, for that, we need to ask science about the probability of its existence. That's a monumental adventure we need to explore by addressing a gigantic question. What if King Kong were real? Zoom in! Since its debut in 1933, this gentle giant has grown from merely 25 feet to a whopping 337 feet in one of the latest flicks. With every inch added to its monstrosity, moviegoers around the world have pondered the possibility of coming face to face with this eighth wonder of the world. So, for fun, let's explore whether science supports the feasibility of King Kong's existence. Firstly, let's discuss the giant ape that once existed, known as Giganto Pythicus Black Eye, which stood as tall as 10 feet and weighed up to 595 pounds. Sadly, approximately 100,000 years ago, this species went extinct due to scarcity of food and a failure to migrate, leaving us with little to no knowledge about their time on Earth. Currently, gorillas hold the title as the largest living apes, reaching heights of around 5 feet on average and weighing between 220 to 600 pounds. Sustaining such a massive body requires a significant intake. On average, an adult male gorilla consumes approximately 50 pounds of food daily, which amounts to about one-eighth of its body weight. This means that comparatively, Kong with his 337-foot body would need at least 3,370 pounds of food per day to survive. To put that in human terms, it's like eating about 15,000 Big Macs. This could be the reason King Kong is mostly depicted as a lonely creature on Skull Island, as the available resources in this place wouldn't be sufficient for many of his kind to live. However, even if we manage to sort the food supply, great size bring great mask and with great mass comes the problem of supporting it on two legs. This implies that Kong would have a difficult time moving quickly and in a worst case scenario, he might not even be able to stand. Even if he possesses strong bones to support his weight, attempting to hop like a monkey would likely cause him to crumble. The upside is that as long as he didn't move around much, Kong could probably survive just fine. However, that wouldn't last long due to the strain on his massive heart. Yes, in a creature as massive as Kong, gravity presents a significant challenge for his heart to maintain effective blood circulation his heart would need to pump blood at much higher pressure. Otherwise, the blood might struggle to reach the higher points of his body, potentially leading to issues such as fainting or insufficient oxygen supply to vital organs. One solution for this could involve walking on all fours, which might reduce the pressure on his heart and circulatory system encountering less opposition from gravity. Additionally, his respiratory system might function more efficiently, potentially enabling easier breathing. 
Not only that, adopting a quadrupedal stance would enable Kong to distribute his weight more evenly, granting him greater ease and mobility. However, despite potentially mitigating some issues, the sheer scale of his body would likely continue to pose significant physiological challenges, rendering it implausible for such a creature to exist from an evolutionary perspective. So, the only place to witness King Kong is in movies. Trivia time! Did you know King Kong was created by an American filmmaker, Marion C. Cooper? Cooper also cast himself as the pilot who takes down Kong in the film's climax. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Never mind. Cracking! Cracking! Oh, it must be an octopus or a giant squid, little kitty. Krakens are creatures from folklore and mystical tales. No, it is so <laughs> Alright. Just for a moment, let's entertain the idea that your misconception is true. To answer a hypothetical question, what if the Kraken was real? Zoom in! Long ago, in the chilly waters of the North Atlantic, there were tales whispered among sailors of a colossal sea monster known as the Kraken. A creature so gigantic and powerful that with just a flick of its enormous tentacles, it could make ships disappear beneath the waves. It's like a mega-sized squid mixed with an octopus with a body that can stretch from hundreds of feet. Its tentacles are super strong and covered in suckers and hooks that can grab hold of anything unlucky enough to be in its path. The Kraken's skin is as tough as ancient weathered leather, protecting it from the harsh underwater world it calls home. And let's not forget about its eyes. They are as big as dinner plates and glowing with an eerie light that can send shivers down your spine. Though the Kraken is purely a creature of legends and there is no scientific evidence to support its existence. However, just for fun, let's take a journey into the realm of imagination and explore what would happen if these magnificent sea creatures were real and alive today. Well, in that scenario, the Kraken would be a force to be reckoned with in the marine world. Its massive size and powerful tentacles would have no match, making it a dominant predator, capable of hunting down giant prey, including large fish like orcas, sharks and even whales. Other sea creatures would have to be on high alert, always watching out for the shadowy presence of the Kraken lurking in the depths. So, no wonder the presence of the Kraken would push other marine organisms to evolve and develop strategies to avoid being caught, such as increasing their speed, camouflage abilities and sensory perceptions. This evolution would create a fascinating array of adaptations within the marine ecosystem, showcasing the incredible power of natural selection. But the impact of the Kraken wouldn't just be limited to the marine ecosystem, as its existence would impact humans too. Yes, the stories of Krakens attacking ships would instill fear in sailors, causing them to reconsider their trade travel routes and travel patterns and avoid the areas where the creature is believed to dwell. 
Also, the presence of the Kraken would disrupt the fishing industry as fishermen may be hesitant to embark into waters known to be habituated by these creatures. This could lead to changes in fishing practices and probably also the shortage of fish supply impacting both livelihoods and the availability of seafood. On a positive note, the existence of the Kraken would undoubtedly attract the attention of sea adventurers, scientists and thrill-seekers, leading to an increase in marine exploration and adventure tourism focused on encountering the Kraken. Plus, it would inspire artists, writers and filmmakers to make art centered around mythical creatures. Remember my friends, Though the Kraken's existence remains firmly rooted in the realm of myth and fantasy, however, it's important to remember that the vast depths of the ocean still hold many mysteries and new discoveries continue to be made. So, who knows what lurks in the darkest depths of the ocean? Trivia time! Did you know the Kraken originates from Scandinavian mythology, specifically Norse folklore? Also, the Kraken has inspired famous literature like Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Never mind. Oh, what are you looking for, little kitty? Kitty's searches, not Miss Monster. Well, I think we must work together with our lovely audience to reveal this mystery by answering a monstrous question. Could the Loch Ness Monster be real? Zoom in! Deep within Scotland's Loch Ness Lake lies a mystery that has captivated the world for generations. The elusive Loch Ness Monster, often affectionately referred to as Nessie. Those who claim to have seen it describe it as a large humped creature with a long neck, small head, seal-like flippers and a lengthy tail. But the real question is, is there any truth to its existence or is it merely a myth born from tales and imagination? Well, the earliest written reference to a Loch Ness monster goes back to the year 565 AD when a famous man named Saint Columba was passing by this lake and saw a huge monster about to attack a person. So the fearless saint quickly intervened and commanded the monster to go back from where it came from. And guess what? The creature actually listened. It turned around and never hurt anyone again. Then, fast forward to 1933 when a new road was completed along Loch Ness's shore, affording drivers a clear view of the loch. It is then a local newspaper named Inverness Courier reported about a couple who saw a huge creature splashing in the lake. Shortly after this, the story of the Loch Ness Monster became a media phenomenon and London's Daily Mail hired big game hunter Marmaduke Wetherell to capture the beast, who announced finding footprints of a massive four-legged creature. The Daily Mail fueled the excitement, printing a sensational headline that boldly declared, Monster of Loch Ness is not a legend, but a reality. Then on April 21st, 1934, the Daily Mail published the iconic Surgeon's Photograph taken by Dr. Robert Kenneth Wilson. 
This image shows Nessie's long neck in rippling water. And since then, many have reported similar sightings. But is there truth to these claims? Well, as far as the footprints preserved by Hunter Wetherill is concerned, after some investigation, zoologists at the Natural History Museum later determined that someone faked the tracks using a stuffed hippopotamus foot. Similarly, experts analyzing the surgeon's photograph noticed the water ripples were too small for a large creature. Plus, a closer look at the uncropped image exposed a toy submarine with an attached artificial head to make it look like the Loch Ness Monster. Hence, in 1994, the image was proven fake. Yes, and the mastermind behind this deception was none other than Mama Duke Wetherill, who is believed to have sought revenge due to the negative reception of Nessie's footprints. But then, what about numerous sightings reported by various people over the years? Well, from 2018 to 2019, scientists from New Zealand looked at Loch Ness water and took DNA bits from it to find out what lives there. After studying, they didn't find any signs of big creatures like catfish, sharks, or plesiosaurs. So, some scientists think the things people saw might be giant eels. In the end, even though we don't have clear proof of the Loch Ness Monster, sometimes mysteries like these spark our imagination and makes life a little more exciting. It's trivia time! Did you know that the waters of Loch Ness stay at a constant chilly temperature of 5 degrees year-round? Yes, they neither heat up or freeze over, creating a unique environment in this mysterious lake. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me Dr. Binox, zooming out. Let's go kitty. We didn't find any proof. That's a good piece of evidence, little kitty. But we will need more than just this footprint to prove its existence. What more? That's something we will uncover in today's episode by answering a mysterious question. Could Yeti be real? Zoom in! In the towering peaks of the majestic Himalayas, through the icy winds and snow-covered slopes blows the mythical tales of a towering and hairy creature called Yeti, also known as the abominable snowman, who has captured our imagination for ages. But is there any truth behind its existence? Well, the myth of the Yeti began in the ancient folklore of the Himalayan people who described these creatures to be allegedly around 6 feet tall and very muscular. Weighing between 200 and 400 pounds, it stands upright on two legs like a human, though its appearance is more like that of an ape with sharp teeth. It is covered in thick white fur to withstand freezing temperatures. Over time, many tales of encounters with this elusive creature have been passed down through generations. One such encounter took place in 1921 when a British-Irish explorer and politician, Charles Howard Burry, spotted large footprints during his expedition. 
he was told by locals that they belonged to the Meto Kangvi, meaning filthy snowman. Howard Burry sent the reports of this incident to the Mount Everest Committee, which were subsequently reprinted in newspapers such as London's The Times on 21st October 1921, introducing the Western world to this Eastern legend. Since then, many brave adventurers have ventured into the snowy heart of the Himalayas in search of the truth. They have made fascinating discoveries during their expeditions, including finding mysterious footprints in the snow, hair samples believed to be from the Yeti, and capturing blurry images and videos that continue to fuel the debate. However, skeptics raised valid concerns about the evidence provided as it lacks conclusive proof. They highlight the presence of hoaxes, misinterpretations, and the limitations of relying solely on eyewitness accounts. This raises the question, to whom did the hair and footprints belong? Well, in 2008, scientists in the US examined hair that were claimed to be from a yeti. After conducting tests, the scientists concluded that the hair which were obtained from the northeast Indian state of Meghalaya actually belonged to a species of Himalayan goat known as the Himalayan Goral. On the other hand, British scientists conducted advanced DNA tests on the mummified remains of a creature that was hunted around 40 years ago, as well as on a single hair found in a bamboo forest 10 years ago. These tests led them to conclude that the legendary Himalayan Yeti may actually be a hybrid of polar bears and brown bears. They found a 100% match with a sample from an ancient polar bear jawbone found in Svalbard, Norway. The jawbone dates back to 40,000 and 120,000 years ago a time when the polar bear and closely related brown bear were separating as different species. But then, what about the ancient stories knitted around yetis? Well, some experts believe that perhaps folktales of yeti were used as a warning or likely for morality so that kids wouldn't wander far away and they would be always close and safe within their community. But despite the lack of concrete evidence, the locals still believe in the existence of this mystical creature and its folklore, which provide motivational and moral lessons. These stories continue to inspire wonder, curiosity and exploration, inviting us to delve deeper into the mysteries hidden amidst the snowy peaks. Trivia time! Did you know fossils show that prehistoric giant apes once did in fact roam Asia? Yes, the genus Gigantopithecus consists of massive monkeys whose fossils have been discovered in China, India and Vietnam. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Oh, look at these footprints. Never mind.